different wrestling schools. Why not try one of yeah. those? Chris Hammer got been in the ring with Chris a couple of times. He's a great guy. Mm. He, he, he's a very good trainer, too. Right. I interviewed him, actually, when he was taking his daughter trick-or-treating one year on Halloween. Yeah. He was actually, I'll tell you how professional he was. He was taking his daughter trick-or-treating from house to house, and while he was doing it, he was doing this interview while he was walking down the street. Yeah, that's so, Chris. He's a great, he's a stand-up guy, he's a, and he's a great wrestler. That's nice. And I have worked out, did training sem seminars with Chris, and I said, you know, and as for anybody who's been in professional wrestling, the day you quit learning, just take your boots and hang them up. Right. Like I said, I've been doing this for years, and I'm still, I was still, always got my ears open listening and trying to learn something new. What do you think about YouTube in terms of promotion? Like, you got YouTube and you got Facebook and MySpace and stuff that's exploded in popularity over the last decade. Um, do you think it's a great tool to post your matches and stuff, like for independent wrestlers who are trying to get out there, or do you think it's a bunch of nonsense uh, for these backyarders and stuff? Well, it's kind of like your double-edged sword. A lot of my matches are up on YouTube. I have a friend of mine, um, Burge Myers. He's really great on computer. He's also down. Him and his brother are with us, Team Honcho at NCW. They're great on computers. They made me a um, promotional video. And it's good to get your name out there. But like, like you just said, it's also giving these kids who you know, see something on TV and they go out and try it in their backyard to also post on the internet. So I guess you could see that as a double-edged sword sword. Right. Now this whole thing about uh, insurance and the independence, there is none. So if you go out there and get hurt, you basically have to go to the doctor and lie. Uh, do you think it'd be great to have a health care union for you guys so there'd be some kind of insurance? or? Well, I, I think it would be a good idea. But uh, as you know, in South Carolina, we have to have a license to be to wrestle in this state, which which is just basically a way for this state to take money from us. Yeah. yeah. Because I've wrestled with all in the very few states that I needed it, but South Carolina. You know, I've been to Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina, went all the way up the coast, and I, you know, North South Carolina is like, oh, you got to have a license. I believe, I believe in Virginia you have to have one too, right? In Virginia you have to have I one. I think it is. And, yeah. you know, I, I was only up there for a little while, so I really didn't get a Virginia license. But West Virginia, you don't. Okay. You know, it's just a way for the state that you're in to go, oh, well, just give us money. Yeah. That's all it is. Okay, what about all the other states? Do you think every state should fall under the same gu uh, guideline and have to have a license? Do you think it should be a, ne a necessary requirement? Or? Well, they claim it's to keep the riffraff out. And it's, that's not true, because anybody can go have a physical done and pay the quote-unquote, like that, in South Carolina, $25 for your license for a year. Anybody can go pay that. Um... Me personally, if you want to keep the rim wrap out, that's don't. If a guy shows up with a gear bag on, hey, I'm a fun wrestler, you know, check him out before you put him on your show. That would take care of that problem. Right, right. I mean, I understand what you mean there and everything in that regard. These derogatory comments that Michael Cole is making as part of his gimmick toward independent wrestling, he's a piece of shit for doing it. Uh, what do you think? Um, Michael Cole and the whole WWE, like I said prior, they're just letting me down tremendously. I mean, they're bringing in this new talent. They push them great for a little while, then they make them look like crap. And they make them, you have to go and, um, they have to go to Triple H and the Undertaker who are past their prime to steal their shows at WrestleMania. That should have never happened. Yeah, but you can't rely they're, on the Undertaker and Triple H come in twice a year, you have to keep pushing this young talent like you're saying, you know? Exactly, and the same with TNA. TNA is sitting on a gold mine, but instead of using that gold mine, they use, Hulk Hogan's got to have his TV time, and Eric Bischoff's got to have his TV time. Screw that. You've got some of the, some great talent who could steal the show. Two of my close personal friends who are working their gunner, and Murphy, these guys, I've been in the ring with both of those guys, they are great inside the ring. But instead of giving them TV time and 
Kazarian and all these guys who can actually work their butts off and turn their ball, why are you not giving them a shot? And staying with the world title. Sting's a great wrestler. He's an icon in his business, but does he really need to be your heavyweight champion? No, he doesn't. No. He doesn't need that belt. Sting has already been focused. Sting has already been... This is one of the greats of our business. He does not need to be your world champion. I've spoken to Frankie Gazarian a number of times here on this show, and I don't think Frankie Gazarian is near that impressive as he makes himself out to be. <laughs> I really, I really, really don't uh, believe that. The Athletic Commission and their rules, like uh, bleeding in Virginia and stuff like that, you can't bleed in Virginia and this and that, or we're going to shut the show down. Do you think the Athletic Commission gets a bit carried away? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, back in 2002, you can't bleed in this state. In 2002, I was in a match, and just a bad bump went down on the outside, and I cut my eyebrow on the ring steps. And the next thing I know, I'm being fined out of, uh, at the wazoo from Houston that they claim that it is on purpose. And I had to go to Columbia and fight it. And I did get it overturned, but really? I mean, they, they, they I don't understand the whole blood thing because people see blood on TV every day, whether it be wrestling, movies, TV shows, and if the guy wants to bleed, let him bleed. The term wrestler has been completely eliminated from the sport of professional wrestling. It's all entertainment now. Yeah. That's what it is. They're referring to wrestlers now as entertainers. That's what Vince McMahon is trying to do. That's that's ridiculous. That's uh that's something that I don't necessarily agree with. And something else I don't agree with is this pushing of this Kelly Kelly girl on uh, on Monday Night Raw for the Divas title. That's a disgrace to women's wrestling. <laughs> what do you think of the Kelly? The Diva locker Kelly room in WWE is, is, is with, with the exception of maybe, even though they did it, she even pulled out Cone, um, Beth Phoenix, and a couple others. That was Diva Division is nothing but a pretty girl with a bikini. So what do you think of Kelly Kelly being involved in the business in, in general? Have you seen much of her work? Uh, do you know her personally? What do you think of her in general? Sum it up here. Uh, in general, I've honestly, i got to give her a little bit of props saying she has been for from when she first stepped into the game. But she's not, you know, all she is is just another pretty face who can do a few things here and there. Her being your Divas champion, is just, all the reason they're pushing her like that is because she was in that little magazine thing. The Maximum 100 or whatever. Maximum Hottest 100 Women, yeah. yeah that well, would, that would and be. truthfully, my biggest issue with pro wrestling today on TV is it has become more of a show. It has become, it doesn't matter how good your work ethic is, it's how good you look on TV. Guys who inspired me more than anything, after I really started paying attention to this, were Eddie Gilbert, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, the guys who went out there and busted their asses and put on great matches. It didn't matter that they had the chiseled body or the perfect face. They knew how to wrestle. Yeah. And now it's become down to, well, this guy looks good. He's cut up. Let's make him a champion. That's basically what it's come down to. So with that being said, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Obviously not working for WWE. Where do you see yourself? Well, truthfully, when I got into this business, my goals were not, you know, I grew up watching WWE, NWA, WCW, all those shows. And just stepping through those ropes were my goals. You know, I've never really, I just wanted to be a professional wrestler. Being paid for it would be great, but it's not like a super goal for me. In 10 years, I would love to still be hanging around, you know, in the independent circuit, showing this the next generation that you don't have to cut seven flips in the damn air to be a pro wrestler. 
All right, uh, let's promote this show here one more time before we wrap it up. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, give the information. Oh, yeah. Give the information out one more time about it. You got the Barbarian coming in. It's going to be a cool yes, show. Sir. I've known from personal experience that the Barbarian is a wonderful talent, and you have some fantastic independent talent on this show too. We'll make sure this all gets on YouTube and in our radio forum for the listeners. But uh, run the information by us one more time. Uh-huh. This, this, the 18th of this month is NCW Summer Heat. Every title we have will be on the line. Like you, like you just said, the Barbarian will be taking on a heavyweight champion, Spanky. Uh, like, probably going to be a very brutal street fight. Anything goes, Tim Falls count anywhere for our tag team titles. As Boomer Payne and Madden, they will take on heavy metal. And their six man gauntlet, all the names have not been announced for a new Carolina champion. And I'm going to be defending my title, the Cruiserweight Championship, against Benny Valentine. And it's, I guarantee for anybody that comes out, we are an old school promotion. We're going to give you the best show you've seen in a while. Great stuff. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing to your fans? It's basically to anybody out there who comes to the shows, and you, when I'm in that ring, you're going to get a good show because I am old school. They call me the extreme one because that's the way I do everything. When I get in that ring, whether it's a headlock or a steel chair in my hand, I'm going to take it to the extreme, and that is a guarantee. One more thing here. Does this promotion have a website? Would you like to throw that out too? At ncwgreenville.com. ncwgreenville.com. So with that being said, for the extreme one, Matt Burns, I'm Jonathan Clark, and we'll see you soon. Hopefully by the next time we do another interview with this guy, Kelly Kelly will be dead.